to another fly tying video. Uh, in this video, I'm tying up uh, this, which is uh, my silicon ant, a uh, little wet ant pattern uh, for, the, for the drowned ants. I found this to be really useful uh, on a dropper uh, or when the water starts to get skinny or slow down, uh, put on a point and, uh, and it works really well, particularly here in Australia where uh, terrestrials um, can become a major food source. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward pattern to tie. It's not terribly difficult. Um, and uh, we'll get on into it and, and, uh, and see how we go. So the hook I'm using is a Daihuku 611 in size 14. And I'm using a black countersunk tungsten bead. Now you can vary the size of the beads um, depending on you know, how, how you want to weight the fly. Um, although I generally tend to stick with this pattern to about a two millimeter size bead. You could probably go up to three, uh, but, but anything bigger than that is really starting to sort of get out of proportion. So I tend to keep this as a, a fairly lightly weighted pattern and, and just fish it accordingly. Um, now you'll notice that I've put the, uh, the bead on backwards so that the countersunk parts towards the front um, this is on purpose so that what I get with the fly is this sort of head forward, um, oblique, flat fronted, uh, I guess you could say, um, picture that, uh, that, that our ants, particularly our bull ants, tend to sort of have. Which is what this pattern's trying to represent is those, our big black bull ants and meat ants and things like this that, that fall into the water. Um, so that's the fly and that's the hook. The other materials, uh, black thread or dark brown thread. I'm using black semperfly spider thread here. Um, either or, it works perfectly fine. The main body of it is made out of black self-fusing silicon tape. And uh, if you look elsewhere on the channel, there's a video talking about the silicon tape and, and what it is, so I won't go too far into it here. But basically, a piece of black uh, self-fusing silicon tape and then from it I trim off a two millimeter wide piece or thereabouts okay now you'll find with this pattern if you depending on how your tape is uh, the silicon tape tends to um, thin out towards the edges of the tape and with this pattern I find that if I use the edges instead of the thicker bits in the middle um, the pattern tends to turn out better um, you get it's a little bit thin a little bit easier to manage and it stretches a little bit better so, uh, so that's the main body. The hackle itself is two hackles. One is either a black or a dark, very dark brown uh, cock cape, small, you know, just a sort of Indian cock cape or Brahma or something like that. Um, just one of the small hackles is all you need, just one of those, black or dark brown. And then the other hackle is the back hackle, one of the back hackles off a starling. Nice one with a bit of colour, a bit of sheen, and uh, and plenty of dark fibres on it is what you're after, and that's pretty much all there is to this fly. So we'll get on into it and uh, and tie it up. So hook in the vise, bead on, and again um, with the counter sink towards the eye. So it's basically sort of on reverse, and I'm just going to come in with my thread and catch in behind the bead, and then trim away the waste. And just make sure that bead's not going to play around too much and tie it in. Now, the next bit is the silicon tape, and I'll just get the backing off this. Probably a little bit awkward, so bear with me. And we're going to catch in the silicon tape okay, at the back of the bead, just with a open loop. And then basically tie that in as we bring it down the bend, or down the round the shank and down into the bend. Now you don't want to go too far because you don't want to sort of create an over-exaggeration of it. But you probably want to come down to around about where, you know, whatever works for you, but about where the barb would be, a little bit further perhaps. And then I'm just going to come back up with the thread and I'm going to stop with about... So I call it three, maybe four millimetres away from the bead. All right? And that's, that space in here is where I'm going to form the abdomen of the ant. 
But once I've done that, I'm just going to start wrapping up the silicon tape. And I'm just going to come up in half overlapping, you know, 50 overlapping turns and bring that forward. Now, I'm not going to come all the way to thread. What I'm going to do is stop a little bit short, about a millimetre or so, and then I'm going to come back over the top of that silicon. And once I get to the back here where I've finished tying in the silicon, I'm going to come forward again with the final turns. And then at that point, I'll bring the silicon all the way up to the bead. Now, what that does is it keeps that abdomen looking sort of, um, and I'll just trim away the waist here. It keeps the abdomen of the fly back here instead of sort of being all bunched up and tending to look um, you know, too uniform. It gives it that nice sort of bulbous abdomen, I guess you could say. And then I'm just gonna secure that in. Now I'll just come down and tidy up a little bit here and then come back up to where I secured in that silicon tape. Now the self-fusing silicon tape, give it, you know, in another 20 seconds, that'll be very difficult to pull apart. It'll hold itself together um, and uh, and it'll withstand, you know, fish taking it and, and all these sorts of things. So it holds itself together pretty well. Um, right, once I've done that, I'm into putting in the hackles. And I, so I'm just gonna take out a, I don't really, you know, I don't want a really big hackle, um, but I want probably to be able to get at least, um, you know, two sort of full turns, two and a half turns out of it. So I've got got the hackle, and I'm just going to come in and, and tease away the material at the back that I don't particularly want, and then I'm just going to trim the shaft of that feather a bit shorter, and come in uh, and catch that in. Uh, actually, sorry, oh, my apologies. We've got to go backwards a bit. We put in the starling first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so starling feather, starling back feather, and I've trimmed away the uh, the fluff. And uh, and then I'm going to come in with the hackle pliers and catch the tip, and then just pull all these fibres back. Um, out of the way, right angles of the shaft. Once I'm happy that I've got it, um, I'm going to leave that tip proud and then I'm just going to come in with the scissors and trim it away and then catch it in uh, with the turn or two just to secure right there and that's it, that's all I need to do. Then I'm going to come in with my cock hackle now that I've trimmed that up and catch that in and then bring thread forward securing in both hackles. So the cock hackle is tied in by the butt and obviously the starling hackle is tied in by the tip. So from here, with your hackle pliers or your clip, whatever you tend to prefer to use, um, you know, the hackle pliers, uh, we're going to catch the tip of the cock hackle and then I'm just going to do a couple, one full turn at the point where I've tied it in. And then from here, I'm going to do an open turn, bringing it forward to the bead, and then basically a sort of a full turn behind the bead. So I've got about two and a half turns, let's say it's three if you want to be particularly pedantic, I guess. Um, something like that. And then I'm just going to catch that cock hackle in. And then come in with my scissors and trim away the tip as best you can. That's the cock hackle tied in. So now with the starling, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically bring this through the cock hackle. So I'm gonna come around with more or less a full turn at the back and then sort of follow where the cock hackle was, trying to bring it in through the cock hackle and then a, a fuller turn at the bead. Once I've got that, I'm gonna come over with thread and catch that hackle in behind, remove my hackle pliers, and then a turn into, to, in the front to lock it in. Come in with my scissors, trim away the waist, and then from here, it's simply a whip finish. 
directly behind the B, two or three turns, and another couple just to be sure. Now, it's, it's all perfectly fine to have a bit of a gap behind that B between it and the hackle um, because, you know, a lot of ant bodies are ahead with some spindly legs off it and a really narrow thorax or, you know, sort of where the area where the legs attach. So if it's, you know, if it looks thin through here, then that's perfectly fine. What you want is a pronounced head and a pronounced abdomen and then these sort of long spindly fibres coming off representing the legs. And that, uh, everyone, is the silicon ant. Um, easy tie, pretty straightforward. You don't need a lot of materials and, uh, and I found it to be pretty effective, certainly here in Australia, um, this time of year where you get a lot of terrestrials into the water. Okay, so uh, tight lines everyone and thanks for watching.